From SportsMax.tv now, welcome to Jamaica. Thank you. First question, you know, you're all kitted out in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Colors. <laughs> Talk to me about that. I mean, how big is the Jamaican influence on you? So, you know, my, my girlfriend, you know, Janelle Broomfield, uh, <laughs> she saw that the kit on the Adidas website probably about two, three weeks ago. And she was like, oh, we, 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 we all got to get the kit because, you know, she's going to be here and, you know, my pops is probably going to come down with her during um, Olympic trials, you know, just to have somebody, you know, close by. And she's like, you know, we all got to have our kids. And she's like, well, we should go down and match in gear. So, you know, I got mine. And um, since she doesn't like the media, she's not here. <laughs> so you can't see her physically. But she also has hers. Uh, we're going to be, you know, doing a podcast with uh, Asafa today. So we're going to be wearing matching. Uh, you'll be able to see it there. You know? right, cool. Second question for you. The, um, you, you, this is your second time here competing at the race of the Grand Prix, right? Third. Third time. Third time, Third time. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a sense of the difference between competing here in Jamaica and competing at home in terms of yeah. the energy that you get. Yeah, I, I'd say, uh, especially in the U.S., you have to pick and choose your places where you're going to run at. Um, you know, if you go to Eugene, Oregon, of course, they're, they're going to you know, turn out a good crowd uh, for Prefontaine and for U.S. championships. But they're mostly a, a distance, you know, involved love. Of course, they love all the events, but really distance. Um, I'll go to New York, um, but all the other, you know, s cities, it's like, ah, you might get something good, you might not. You know, it, it's a very coin flip, unless it's the Olympics. Mm. When you go to Jamaica, <laughs> I, I tell everybody, you're treated like a freaking rock star. Like, it, like it's nothing that you're going to get anywhere else. Like, all of a sudden, people know who you are, and they're giving favors for you, and it's like, they, they act like you're freaking Will Smith or something. I'm like, goodness gracious, like, I, <laughs> like I, I came here, me and Janelle were here, you know, uh, last year in October, late October, and we were just here for three days, and I went to the hotel, and, you know, once they figured out who I was, and it was like, oh, no, no, you can't stay in that room, you know, you gotta stay in this room, I'm just like, it's just three days, it's like, no, 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 you gotta stay here, you gotta stay here, I'm just like, oh, wow, like, like I'm not used to that treatment. Next question? Um, Garfield Jones, television director. Um, Noah, the talk about world records, it's, it's high in the air. You see Fred getting in the conversation. Do you still get up daily and say, hey, I'm going to break a world record today or when it comes, it comes? Every day it's in the back of my mind. Every day I train as if I'm getting closer and closer. Because every year I get closer and closer. Especially this year, we've made a lot of headway in our 100 meter training. Uh, and I'm very eager to show everybody how much headway we've made on Saturday because it's been consistent. You know, it, it's, it's one thing when you get it once or twice in practice, but we've been seeing it happen week after week, um, run after run. And I believe that the 150 proved that we've been making progress on both ends, on the 200 side and on the 100 side. And of course, the world record is always going to be in the back of my mind, but you know, Olympic golds are Olympic golds, and nobody can take those away from you. Uh, follow up to that, which one of them would you say would be easier? Easier? One or the two? Definitely the two. <laughs> the 200 is definitely going to be easier. I have a firm, firm chokehold on the 200 meters right now. And I'd say I'm, I'm kind of just letting everybody play their cards for now, and you know, I'll, I'll play my one of my spades at uh, New York, but I'll play a, definitely play some jokers, uh, big and small, at uh, after the Olympic trials and during the Olympic trials, and then of course for the Olympics. Last one for me. Um, you're running at the race of World Speed in you say it's back here. Yeah, yeah. How special would it be to put on a special time in the National Stadium? You know, that's as I was going through the hallways last year, and now. Um, they're walking us through the tunnels in the back alleyways. And, you know, I've done that tons of times for brand new stadiums and, you know, Oregon and, you know, New York. But as I was going through there, I was like, oh, wow. Uh, Usain Bolt has come through this tunnel. You know, Johan Blake has come through this tunnel. Asafa Powell, Nesta Carter. And they, you know, dropped crazy times on this track. It's like, all right, you know, I want to add my name to that list. And I've done it in the 200. It's like, okay, now I want to do it in the 100. I want to prove that you know I'm a doubler. You know, I got the, the championships for it. I want to continue that reign. Okay. Oh,
Um, tell me how you how are you feeling both as a person and regarding the competition you face tomorrow and what is the expectation from you as well? Yeah, I'm I'm feeling very good, I'm very joyous, I'm blessed and highly favored, as I've, I've been telling a lot of people. Um, I'm blessed because I'm I'm not, <laughs> you know, depressed, I'd say. <laughs> that helps a lot <laughs> when you're going out and training. Uh, and then, you know, I'm, I'm highly favored because everywhere I, I go, I feel that, you know, God is just constantly, you know, rolling out a red carpet. It's not to say that it's all sunshines and, and rainbows and flowers, but it's been very joyful to be able to do what I love and still consistently see improvement each year, and especially the improvements we've been seeing this year. And how do you feel about the competition? I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I, you know, we were practicing this morning. And I'm just you know doing block practices, and you know my 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 training partner. He's he's beating me a little bit, <laughs> but you know I still can't stop smiling. You know I know tomorrow is gonna be a magical day. With or without no records, just one more. With or without no records, are you looking to set a mark tomorrow? What's the stadium record? Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Let's go after that. Why not? Shoot for the stars. Well, so you Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to Jamaica, Thank seeing you all over the world. And, um, something you said a while ago about depression, and that in two, two years ago you were depressed. What happened then and what has come to make you, and what do you have to say to people? How do you get over it, overcome it, and move on to great tides like you have? Yeah, I'm not going to say that it's an easy thing to get over depression at all. Um, catching it early is the, the greatest thing that you can do. Um, and then once you catch it, you know, making sure that you're getting as much help as possible. Uh, the, the longer you let it fester, the worse it can become until it gets to a point where it's irreversible. Uh, of course, that can take quite a few years to get to, but if you ignore it for too long, that will be your situation. Um, and, you know, for me, it, it was catching it quick. And being able to catch it quick meant that I could, you know, get on my antidepressant medication and then come off of it, you know, a few months down the line. You know, I wasn't on it for longer than a year. And thankfully, I was able to say, okay, let's, let's, now get back to that energetic person that I am. And keeping family and, and who I want in my circle very close to me was extremely important as well. And it helped me get back faster and faster. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh, no. Excuse that. me, sir. Um, no, <laughs> final, final question from me. Um, you've been very vocal in the sport, especially at the last, the last World Champions where you did really, really well. You and Shakiri are basically the face of the sport these days. Why do you think the sport has not gained as much traction in your home country as it is? We was, just watched Oslo yesterday with a mm -hmm. packed stadium. Yeah. We, don't, we hardly see that in the U.S. anymore. Why do you think that is and why does it continue to be that way from your perspective? I, I don't feel that track and field plays the game that US, you know, the U.S. market plays. The U.S. market is a, a capitalist society. <laughs> And what that means is that whoever is generating the most excitement, the most hype, um, the most marketing for their product, they get the attention. If they're doing the networking, they get the attention. If they are, you know, making sure that everybody is, you know, well paid off and everybody's getting what they want out of the project, they get the attention. Track and field is not playing the game of the U.S. capitalist market system, and because of that, we're not reaping the benefits. Um, it's a lot easier to do that in Europe because, you know, it, it, they have a, a strong bond through history. Um, the U.S. doesn't care so much about history. <laughs> they care about uh, what have you done for me lately. And in Dragonville, we don't, we just don't play that game um, when it comes to the marketing side. So I don't feel that it will gain that traction unless we play that game. Um, and that can just... Be, if you want to just play that game in the U.S., that's fine, and not play it somewhere else, that's fine. But until you play the game, you will not reap the benefits. Yes, um, well, as someone who grew in the sport of track and field, um, how were you socialized the thinking about the Jamaicans in terms of <laughs> you, you, what, what you, you grew up hearing about yeah. Jamaicans, and uh, are you, you saw them as adversaries, enemies, friends, or? Yeah, I'd say that growing up, like, so, you know, I was born in 1997, you know, so most of what I hear is through my dad, because he ran, you know, through the mid-90s, the very early 90s. Um, you know, so you, of course, I hear about Michael Johnson, you know, how my dad was racing him, and, you know, um, 
just kind of the, the U.S. dominancy that we had at the time. So after hearing those stories, I go to you know watching track and field now for my very first time. So I'm watching you know Beijing. I'm watching 2009 uh, Berlin. You know you're now getting into 2012 Olympics, and it's like. Um, my dad told me we were the best. Why are we not winning? <laughs> you know, so it's almost like, oh, wow, we kind of lost that dominancy. And I was like, you know, when I come on the scene, we're gaining that back. You know, that, that was my goal when I decided that I was going to get back on when I was going to be my turn to run. Um, and I think that a lot of the people my age and from my generation saw that and thought the same thing. And, you know, we have... You know, won the past world championships for the last three years uh, in the 100 meters and in the 200s, thanks to me. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, again, I think that was a movement. And again, seeing that, you've seen the world again make huge strides and progression. So now we have a huge, huge um, uh, progression in the African countries as well, where you're seeing everybody wants a piece of the cake, you know, and nobody's settling for, you know, side pieces. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. All right. I know Daniel Blake from the Jamaica Observer. You've had a pretty um, consistent schedule since um, 2021, especially since you started to focus on doubling. How have you managed to stay physically ready to constantly produce those times that you constantly aim for? I put a lot, a lot, a lot of money into medical a lot of money. Probably most of my budget is medical. Uh, and I, ever since you know my first world championships in 2019, I have always said and had the mindset of if I put my chips into this category of medical, it will pay me back. And every time it has. Every time that I've flown out my massage therapist to a you know a world championships, I've left with a gold medal. Every time that I've said, okay, I'm going to bring my chiropractor and my massage therapist next time because, you know, I've, I've gained more money because of my medal, you know, I've now walked away with three medals or I'm walking away with two medals, you know, and it consistently just pushes the envelope. Okay, now that I have the money, it's like, where can I, you know, keep extending it? Now that I have the resources, I fly for business class because I get to sleep on the plane the whole time. I'm not cramped up in this position standing up, you know, that's constantly just moves me forward to I'm going to be in the best shape whenever I show up. Um, and that has, again, paid dividends down the line and it's still uh, the mindset that I keep to this day. Yeah, um, we've also had the, as, as you mentioned, the USA and Jamaica and rivalry over the years. You go up against Oblique tomorrow. Um, we also have some rising um, stars in the sprint as well. What do you make of some of our stars, including Oblique and how important is it for the sprints to have that sort of USA Jamaican rivalry like we saw with Bolt and Gatlin and yeah. Kassaf and Gay? I'm a firm believer of iron sharpens iron. Uh, when, when one person is doing well, it's going to inspire others to you know step up. And the more competition I get to face, the better I get. So I say, you know, whoever wants to run, let's run. And you know, I'm not the type of guy that's like, oh yeah, I don't want to run till I'm ready. No. I'm the type of guy who says, I want to race you when I'm good, when I'm bad, and, you know, whatever comes out of it, I'm going to take that and move it on to the next one. So I know by the time we get to the championships, it's going to be me every time. <laughs> one final question. All right, no, you were here last year about this time for races, um, and you were just weeks away from the World Championships in Budapest. You're here again this time, and just weeks away from the Olympic Games. Yeah. How would you say, your, what, what are you like now in terms of your, your form, your fitness? this time last year as opposed to now? I'd say last year we came in here with you know, the idea that we were gonna run the 200, we were gonna make our mark. You know, we, I think uh, we went to Paris like a week after. Um, so we were really kind of balancing the 100 and the 200 at that time with you know, the knowledge that we were always gonna be in shape to run the 200. This year we have put a lot of the same emphasis on strength and seen, you know, a, a lot of progression paid back in the 100 meters, especially in the first 60 meters. Knowing that, we've been able to put together more consistent starts, more consistent, you know, top ends, and our practices have just been, you know, 
they've been really good. I, I was at, you know, the Adidas um, Atlanta City Games, and I was saying, yeah, I've been seeing Tyson Gay level practices, as my coach would say, and I was able to prove that by, you know, tying the American record in the 150. So I'd say that I'm still in that shape and progressing more and more. So I would love to see a PR tomorrow. You yeah. know, and the times that I've been seeing suggest that I will PR tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Have we heard you on World Athletics' decision to give um, 50,000 US to gold medal winners in, 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 in Paris? You've seen uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very aware of that. Yes, have we heard you on it? Did you give a view on it? Uh, I've, I've given some people's view. I can give my view if right now, if that's what you're wondering. <laughs> yes, <for sure. laughs> uh, my view is that I believe it's a great first step. Um, there, like I, I say before, putting track and field in front in the leading position always is, is a great thing. Um, if we're leading other sports in the Olympics and saying, hey, we're going to be the first, I think that's a great move. And it puts us in a power position, you know. Um, but I don't think this is the time to let off the gas pedal. This is the time to even, you know, keep pressing on it. You know, just this, again, great first step. What's the next move? Keep going with it. And in boxing yesterday, a couple of days ago, said they are giving gold medal winners 100,000 at Paris Olympics. Love it. Now we got to make sure that we're going to be able to keep <laughs> pushing that envelope just like every other sport.